Hello and welcome to a new video about measurement. We are still measuring flow. This time we are going to talk about ultrasonic flow measurement, which is quite often used. Why we are going to see? Well, ultrasonic flow measurement, how is this working? Let's imagine we have some sort of pipe. Pipeline. With a bigger diameter. Okay, and there we have this streaming content inside. Here is the flow. This is what we want to measure. Okay. Actually, what we are introducing, what we are introducing are two sensors, one here and one here. All right, two sensors on opposite sides of the of the pipe, and a little bit apart from each other. So this this the direct connection between the two sensors is a little bit off axis. Yeah, so so not radial, but a little bit tilted. Okay, so if this sensor is now issuing an ultrasonic impulse. Uh, so we have here ultrasonic impulse. It will prolong with a certain velocity. Okay. And the speed helps. Uh, the flow here helps carrying these shock waves, what actually sound is, carrying these shock waves in this direction. So we have those two, here we have, let's say, one is from the speed, this is from flow, and this is speed of sound. Speed of sound, and this is from flow. Combined, we have a higher speed. Okay. Now let's have a look how it is if this one is issuing with the same speed of sound. Yeah. And then we have the flow here, still in this direction. Here we have a, a lower velocity. Okay. So here we have this, this, and here we have this. So Sound impulses from here to here will be faster than sound impulses from here to here because this has to go upstream and this is going downstream. It's, it's logical. Yeah? And from the time difference, from the travel difference, so I'm issuing here sound impulse, I'm issuing here sound impulse, I'm issuing here sound impulse, I'm issuing here sound impulse. And I always, I know when I issued this sound impulse and I know when I detect the sound impulse on the other side. Yeah? So this is a receiver and transmitter. Yeah? Sonic receiver and transmitter. Those things here. Yeah? And measured actually is so here we have one, here we have one velocity, yeah. Measured is the travel difference, yeah. sound impulse in both direction. One upstream, 
one downstream. This is exactly what you have to adjust, how far they are apart, and then they know when they should receive an echo. Yeah? So there is of course limits, you cannot be very far off, because then it's too too far apart, then we don't hear anything, yeah? and we need to be not too opposite, uh, because then we are, well, then we have no, no uh, axial component, and we need this to determine the travel, the time difference. Yeah? This, so this is how we determine the speed, the flow of the medium there inside. Okay, that's one possibility. Yeah? Flow time measurement, it's called. Runtime measurement. Maybe some of you have already seen that there are also um, ultrasonic measurements, yeah, which do only consist of one sensor, not two sensors. Yeah. How is this working? Well, this is working with the notice Doppler effect. Yeah. How is this working? Let's again have some pipe. We put in here an ultrasonic receiver and transmitter also. Same. Yeah? And what we need in a Doppler effect, we need some particles. Here is a particle. Uh, particle. which has a certain velocity, yeah, which is reflecting the flow, simply. The particles are inside the medium, so we need to have there inside some particles, some dirt, some whatever. Yeah. Why do we need this? Because here we are issuing an ultrasonic impulse. This is here echoed. Yeah. This is here echoed, and because this is moving, I have a shift in frequency. So I put a, a sound with a certain frequency out, and I receive a sound with a different frequency. If it's the same frequency, then it means it's in standstill. Uh, the echo is the same frequency. If it's getting closer to me, then the frequency will be higher. If it's getting far away from me, the frequency will be lower. All right. So this is the so-called this is the so-called Doppler measurement. Using the Doppler effect, which everybody knows from a car passing by. Yeah, if the car is getting far away, the sound looks sounds deeper for us, and if if this, uh, something is approaching, it sounds higher, and it's exactly like this. But this doesn't make a sound, so I need to put a sound there uh, and let the sound reflect. That's how this is working. Yeah, so measure. Is the frequency shift? of the echo compared to the original impulse. However, you know, here we really need some dirt inside, something inside. If this is a very, very clear media, I cannot use Doppler at all. So the majority of those things is usually those runtime measurements. All right. Now I'm almost done with my sketch. Back. I'm satisfied. <laughs> Good. So those are the possibilities of ultraflow 
uh, ultrasonic flow measurement. So what are the upsides? Uh, the upsides, because as I said, they are widely used. Uh, why? Uh, because, you know, we can use this on big nominal diameter. Yeah, can be used. at big nominal diameters huh? dn bigger than 600 nominal diameter bigger than 600 millimeters there there we can even find four meters also possible huh? ultrasonic flow measurement there is almost no limit in diameter yeah we are not in direct contact with medium yeah so we can aggressive is no problem okay we have no pressure loss no pressure loss nothing built inside no pressure loss no danger of of congestion or something like this, yeah. We have a high lifespan. It's usually working, yeah. We there is a clamp on design, yeah. We clamp this and this sensor just on on an existing piping, yeah. Existing piping can be used extended yeah. there's not not much effort there in installing this yeah so this is all this. and you know pressure and so on this has almost no influence yeah so other physical properties do they work independent from other physical properties yeah? so this is also something which worth to mention okay? so what are the downsides back yeah we are heavily depending on the flow profile. Yeah. We are only measuring, as you, you can imagine, there is only a short, a small layer where we are really measuring. Yeah. And if the flow outside this layer, so behind or above this layer in, in my sketch, uh, would be different, I'm measuring the wrong thing. Okay, this is also the accuracy. Is not that high. There are other flow measurement methods which work better. Yeah. Uh, Doppler design. Only in special cases. Like I said, we need dirt and so on. Yeah. And it's relatively high priced. I say accuracy is not that high. Here we have here accuracy. Have around zero to five percent of value, two percent of end scale. Here we are even a little bit worse. Yeah, so we have one percent of value, two percent of end scale. Yeah, widely used simply, very often used simply because this clamp on, so this is very convenient. You know, this is very convenient. We are independent from uh, physical parameters and big diameters. You know, this is widely used. Ultrasonic flow measurement, and this is how it is working. 
next time we are going to talk about yet another type of flow measurement. Yeah? Next time we are going to talk about a so-called vortex flow measurement. Yeah? How this is working, next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.